Good morning. How do you take, by cunning, someone who prophetically can see the future? Today we're looking at Mark 14, the first two verses. Let's read it. After two days it was the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by trickery and put him to death. But, they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar of the people. So as we near the end of Jesus' ministry, you know, the miracles have been piling up. The religious leaders are just filled with hatred. Jesus is cutting into their authority, it seems to them. And everything's at stake. They're losing credibility with the people. And they just can't bear it anymore. And so what we have here is a plot. And they are going to try to take him. Uh, they're gonna, but they're triangulating on the people. Not while the feast is happening. So they're, they're worried about what the, how the people will react. They can't do miracles even remotely like Jesus can. And they've just made a decision. They are going to kill him. God's law says thou shalt not kill. And who knows it better than they do? But they're going to kill him. So it shows you they, they have lost their minds. They have, are really out of control. This is how far they've gone. They are actually plotting to murder somebody. So now their move is a desperate one, isn't it? How do you take by, by cunning, how do you take by stealth someone who definitely is exercising miracles, somebody who perhaps can prophetically see you coming? How do you do that? So now here's the interesting piece. Jesus knows. Jesus knows they're coming. He knows they're going to come to kill him. And Jesus is going to walk right into the trap. Because why? Because he knows his mission. His mission is to, uh, to do good and to die doing good. He's going to die for these people. If any of these murderers will turn, he will pardon them, forgive them, transform them, and give them eternal life. So we hope that some of them did later turn. How do you deal with somebody like that? He will pardon them. He will give them eternal life. But for the moment, they're, they're still self-deluded. And he's still willing to die for them. His life will be offered in place of yours and mine, in place of those conniving, plotting, murderous priests and Pharisees. His life is going to be offered even so that they can come to him. They can turn to him if they are willing. And he's ready to do that. He's walking through it. He's going to do it. And so there you have the situation. Jesus is willing to die for us, even though we are so much in opposition to him. How amazing is the mercy and the goodness of God. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for watching over us. We're thinking about Jesus, who knows these people are coming to kill him, and he's still willing to die for them. Lord, help us to search our hearts. Help us to be right with you. May we hold nothing back from you. As we come into these last chapters in, in the Gospel of Mark, we're going to see your death and your, your suffering and crucifixion. And so, Lord, prepare our hearts to be more receptive to your goodness. Thank you for your mercy and your great love. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so pray for those that are self-deluded. Do good for them. And some of them may turn before, before it's too late. God be with you today.